Let heaven rejoice and earth be glad. Let all creation sing. Let children proclaim through every land. Hosanna to our King. Sound the trumpet into the night. The day of the Lord is near. Wake his people, lift your voice, proclaim it to the world. Let heaven rejoice and earth be glad. Let all creation sing. Let children proclaim through every land. Hosanna to our King. Hosanna to our King. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we begin our new liturgical year, as we begin the season of Advent, we first start by blessing the Advent wreath and lighting the first Advent candle. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless this wreath. May its circular dimension always remind us of your eternity. May each candle as we light it remind us of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, coming into the world as our days grow shorter, as darkness increases, that Jesus Christ will dispel all darkness in this world. And may Almighty God bless this, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, it is good for us to be here to worship the one true God. In order for us to prepare our hearts, our minds, and our souls, let us first acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Graciously grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, are, O Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer from of old is your name. Why, O Lord, do you make us stray from your ways and harden our hearts so that we do not fear you? Turn back for the sake of your servants, for the sake of the tribes that are your heritage. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you and your ways, but you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. 
We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There was no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Restore us, O God, let your face shine, that we may be saved. Restore us, O God, let your face shine, that we may be saved. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Stir up your mind and come to save us. Restore us, O oh God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Turn again, O oh God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand has planted. Restore us, O oh God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Let your hand be upon the man at your right. Son of man, you have made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O oh God. Let your face shine that we a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with a particular task, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crow, or at dawn, or else he might find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Happy New Year, everyone. That's right. Now, I understand what's going on. This is the beginning of our liturgical year. Advent begins the new liturgical year for us. We change the color of our robes. We have the Advent wreath. It's an opportunity for us to, again, focus on what it means and the beginning. And is this time of preparation. The word Advent actually means to prepare and to wait the coming, to prepare for a great experience. And of course, we know what we're preparing for. But there's three focuses for the season of Advent. Today's readings are all about the focus on the second coming of Christ when he comes in glory. Of course, we are abundantly aware of celebrating the coming of Christ as an infant 2,000 years ago in history in Bethlehem which we are also preparing to celebrate at Christmas. And then in mystery, we prepare to celebrate the coming of Christ into our lives in a new and dynamic way as we give birth to Christ in our lives, in our families this Christmas as well. The readings today speak to us of the end times, and I love the first reading because I love the humanity in our readings. It doesn't hide the imperfections. They didn't gloss over it. They didn't go back and edit out anything that was a little, no. I think we could all put these into our own words, basically, this first reading. You know when life's not going well? Oh, Lord, why did you abandon us? Lord, why did you lead us this way? Lord, why aren't you helping us? Lord, and only to realize, as the prophet does, This longing for the Lord, this absence does not come, of course, because God has distanced himself from humanity, but because humanity has turned their back on God. And this longing, this lack of the presence of God, that sense of the presence of God, of course, is what makes Isaiah then long and and basically cry out, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. Oh, that the mountains would quake with your presence, Lord. Lord, we want you to be here with us again like you were of old. We want you to be one with us again. This is the longing that we are supposed to have during the season of Advent as we prepare ourselves. But then, of course, it goes on, and I love it goes, then it, it enters into a sense of hope after he acknowledges the truth of the matter. We all fade like a leaf, and in our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. It's not because of God we don't experience him or we don't feel his presence, but it's because of us and the things that we have done. But then the hope. Yet, Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, you are the potter, We're the work of your hands. You have created us. You have brought us into existence. We know that you still long to care for us. And when we turn back to you, when we prepare our hearts, our minds, and souls, you come in in ways that we never possibly imagined. The gospel today is an exhortation of Jesus to be ready, to be alert, 
you don't know the day, you don't know the hour, you don't have, we don't know when the Lord is coming. But when he does come, it's supposed to be a time of great excitement and great joy. Why? Because he is the one, as St. Paul says in the second reading, he is the God who is ever faithful. He is the God who strengthens us to the end so that we can be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not through our own merits, but it's through the merits of Jesus Christ who we desire to unite ourselves with more perfectly. And so during this season of Advent, as we are called to be ready, well, what does it mean to be ready? What does it mean to, to wait and to prepare? You know, when we're waiting to celebrate a great event or, you know, let's say a wedding, you know, people are waiting and they're longing, there is all this anticipation. Well, it's not an idle waiting, it's an active waiting. It's all the preparation and all the planning and all that goes into it, just like we're going to do as we prepare for Christmas. All the decorating and cleaning and, you know, the cooking and the invitations and family and friends. Well, this year it'll be like the people who live in the house, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, but it's still this longing because, and all these things are good but if all we're doing is stringing lights outside and we're not actually preparing this dwelling as well to celebrate the birth of Christ, then we've kind of missed the point. But all those things are important because they reflect what Advent's all about. You know, the beautiful lights that people put up, it's wonderful because it symbolizes the light of Christ coming into the world. You know, as we prepare and we give gifts, that's wonderful, but it's just an expression of how grateful we are for what God has given us. And maybe Advent isn't all about preparing for the things, but maybe it's actually about preparing to receive the ultimate gift. The ultimate gift this Christmas. Not something that someone can give us, but God can give us. The gift of our Lord and Savior born in Bethlehem, the salvation of the world, the gift of Christ being born in us anew, in our families, in our community, in our parish, in our schools, us giving life to Christ. That's the Eucharist. That's why we come to Mass. We receive the Eucharist and we become who we receive. And Christ takes life in us. And we are called to go forth and give birth to Christ in our world through our thoughts, through our words, through our actions, through our lives. Today, as we celebrate this Eucharist, let us ask for the grace as we plan and prepare to celebrate the beautiful feast of Christmas to first journey through the season of Advent, preparing our lives to receive Christ at Christmas and to give birth to Christ so we can make him present in our world. My brothers and sisters, let us stand, and in response to God's word, let us proudly profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we now make our prayer for our community and for the world, let us all pray to Christ the Lord, not only for ourselves and our own needs, but for the entire people of God. The intention for today's Mass is for Bernard Lacroix, by Dollard and Kathleen Lacroix, for Doni, Tony DiPietro, by Patricia and Doug Draper, and for John and Gertrude Van Ors, by Fritz and Giselle Van Ors. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all clergy, that they may help us stay awake and be prepared for God's coming. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Archbishop Terence Prendergrass, who is celebrating both his silver jubilee as a bishop and his well-deserved retirement. And the blessings of the archdiocese go with him as he starts a new chapter in his life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that we may discover God's word in every sound that touches our ears, God's touch in every human embrace, and God's love in every gesture of kindness among us. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful, that we will stand watchful and ready until God's Son is revealed in all his glory. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater attentiveness to the health experts this Christmas regarding COVID-19, that we may adapt our celebrations so that we may all remain healthy during Christmas and into the new year, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick among our families and friends, especially Jimmy Atwill, Aaron Holt, Brenda Rose, Kathleen Kendall, Kathleen Lacroix, Doris McDonald, Rob Patterson, Caleb Hodge, Art Smith, Tim Cote, Sharon Piche, and any others whose who are ill but not included by name. May Christ bless them and heal them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Father Hugh Mc McNeil, brother of Bernadette McInnes of our parish, Margaret McGrath, Doug Goodwin, Scott Hudson, and all those named in our book of remembrance, may Christ welcome them into eternal glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, who brings salvation to all and desire that no one should perish, Hear the prayers of your people and grant that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule and your church rejoice in tranquility and devotion through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifices of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the souls of the Amen. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your Lift up your hearts. Up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly just, right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. And when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the, his saving passion, the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Faustina, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Terence, our Bishop, Marcel, his coadjutor Bishop, and the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the 
of the world. Oh, grant us, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who better will the Father work with spirit for that give life to the world for me that is most holy body and blood for all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and have a lovely departed from me. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. During this time, when you are unable to receive the Eucharist, you are encouraged to make an act of spiritual communion. You are invited to join me. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and a desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Sing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a man like me. I 
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. One brief announcement. Our parish, once again, is... Uh, participating and coordinating with uh, Ron Petrie in the Backpacks for the Homeless program. And so there are backpacks at the back of the church if anyone would wish to take one. And they will be available also tomorrow at the church as well. The Lord be with you. And, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep, a new day is dawning for all those who do. The people in darkness have seen a great light, the Lord of all has conquered the night. Let us build the city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into day. Let us build the city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing for the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into day.